Today's integral has a pretty fascinating structure and the result is going to be pretty cool. However, you have to wait till the end of the video to find that out. However, the solution development is pretty awesome as well. So let's call our integral i. And our approach begins with the definition of the sine function from complex analysis, where sine of x equals e to the i x minus e to the negative i x divided by 2 times i, which implies that i equals 2 times i times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x squared divided by e to the i x minus e to the negative i x dx. Up next, I'm going to multiply upstairs and downstairs by e to the negative i x. And that gives us a familiar structure. So you now have 2i times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x squared times e to the negative i x times 1 by 1 minus e to the negative 2i x dx. And we're going to use the series expansion for this function here, where 1 by 1 minus e to the negative 2i x equals the sum over the non-negative integers of e to the negative 2i x to the k, which can of course be written as the sum over k of e to the negative 2i k x. So this implies that your integral i equals 2i times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x squared times e to the negative i x times the sum over k of e to the negative 2i k x dx. Now because these two terms outside the sum are independent of the k variable, you can slip them inside the sum and you can write it now as 2i times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the sum over k of x squared times, now multiplying the two exponential functions, I can factor out a negative i x term, and that gives me 2k plus 1, and the integration is being carried out with respect to x, of course. Now, can we switch up the order of the integration and the summation operators? Well, over this interval of, uh, interval of integration from 0 to pi by 2, the quadratic term is no cause for concern whatsoever, and the complex, complex exponential function is an oscillatory function. So there are no concerns regarding convergence or boundedness or even continuity. So yeah, we can just switch up the order of the uh, summation and the integration operators and we now have the sum over k of the integrals from 0 to pi by 2 of x squared times e to the negative i x times 2k plus 1 dx. Up next I'd like to separate the complex exponential term into real and imaginary parts using Euler's formula. So we have 2i times the sum over k of the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x squared times the cosine of 2k plus 1 x. Uh, you have a negative sign up here, so a negative uh, minus i times the sine of 2k plus 1 x integration with respect to x. So using the linearity of the uh, sigma notation and the integration operator, we have 2i times the sum over k of the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x squared times the cosine of 2k plus 1 x dx minus uh, the sum over k of the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x squared times the sine of 2k plus 1 x dx. And multiplying this 2i term, we now get, uh, we can write this as 2i times this sum, and uh, oh, you had an i over here, and multiplying 2i, uh, multiplying 2i by i gives you 2i squared, which is negative 2, and 2 negatives give you a positive, so you have a plus 2 over here. Okay, so remembering exactly what the left-hand side of the equation was, 
what I'm about to do is not exactly very rigorous. Yeah, full disclaimer, what I'm about to do is not rigorous uh, in the in the true sense anyway. And there's a much more rigorous method of calculating this integral using lo using lots of manual labor and integration by parts. And that solution was sent to me today by uh, my good friend Myers. And I'm going to present that solution uh, in a few days, but this was just something that I came up with that seemed pretty awesome. And it gave the right result. And yes, I do admit that this is not extremely rigorous. This is not rigorous in the true sense, but it's not that bad. It's a pretty cool technique anyway. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the real part of both sides. Now, what benefit does this have? Well, this here is a, this here is the integral of some real valued function of x over a segment of the real line, which is a real number. So the real part of this integral returns the integral itself. Okay, that made sense. And now for this uh, right hand side of our equation, we see that we have, again, this integral here over this sum will evaluate to some real number. And then you have this two times i term being multiplied by it. So that gives you a pure complex number. So the real part of this integral is zero. And this here is a real number again. So by the same token, on the right hand side, you're going to be left with twice the sum over k of the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x squared times the sine of 2k plus 1 x dx. Now evaluating this integral is pretty standard stuff. Let's define an integral i sub k to be the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x squared times the sine of 2k plus 1 x dx. So using integration by parts, and we're obviously going to differentiate the um, quadratic term here, the, the quadratic polynomial, and we're going to integrate this tricky boy here. So we have x squared, and the cosine goes, uh, and the sine goes to a negative cosine when you integrate it, right? So okay, cool. Divided by this 2k plus 1 term, and the limits of integration are 0 and pi by, and you have. Uh, two negatives giving you a positive, and this is just a constant, right? The 2k plus 1 term. So you have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of this cosine term, and the derivative of x squared is 2x. So you can take the 2 outside again, integration with respect to x. Now, in the limit as x goes to 0, the x squared term is going to make sure that everything is 0. And in the limit as x goes to pi by 2, you have 2k plus 1 times pi by 2, which are just odd multiples of pi by 2. So the cosines go to 0. So this entire term here evaluates to a big fat 0. And you're left with 2 by 2k plus 1 times this integral. And again, we're going to use integration by parts. So we have um, x. The cosine goes to a positive sign. Yeah, it's a positive sign. So x times the sine of 2k plus 1, x divided by 2k plus 1, with the limits of integration being 0 and pi by 2. Negative sign, again, 1 by 2k plus 1 times the integral from 0 to pi by 2. The derivative of x with respect to x is just 1, so we're left with this sine term. So we have 2k plus 1, x dx. Okay, cool. So you have 2 by 2k plus 1. And here, in the limit as x goes to uh, 0, the sine term is going to make sure you get a 0. And as x goes to, as x approaches pi by 2, then you do have um, pi by 2. And the sine of 2k plus 1 x, oh, pi by 2, is negative 1 to the k, right? 
Okay, cool. So you have this uh, negative 1 to the k term divided by 2k plus 1. Okay, fine. And minus 1 by 2k plus 1. Now because of this term, you're going to get another 2k plus 1. So you have a square and you have the cosine of 2k plus 1x with the limits being 0 and pi by 2. And again, as x goes to pi by 2, you're going to get a 0, and as x goes to 0, you're just going to get cosines of zeros, which are 1s, and you have this um, negative sign as well, no weight. Wait a second, I am missing a negative sign somewhere, I'm pretty sure I am, yeah, here. The sign goes to a negative cosine, so you have a negative, you have two negatives cancelling out, and again, as x goes to pi by 2, you get a 0 minus the cosine of 1 is just 1. So you have a net negative sign here. Yeah. So, oops. Um, yeah, so you have a 1 times this. And okay, fine. So this is what you get when you evaluate... Um, I sub k and just a bit more simplification will give you pi by 2k plus 1 square times negative 1 to the k minus uh, 2 by 2k plus 1 cubed. And your integral i, remembering what it was, it was this uh, I sub k integral summed over k and multiplied by 2. The whole thing is being multiplied by 2. So i equals 2 times the sum over k of i sub k result, which is in fact 2 pi times the sum over k of negative 1 to the k divided by 2k plus 1 squared minus um, 4 times the sum over k of 1 by 2k plus 1 cubed. Now, the result is actually pretty nice because this infinite series here is in fact Catalan's constant. So you have 2 pi times top g minus 4 times this sum here evaluates to 7 eighths of Apery's constant, which is the zeta function evaluated at 3. And you can verify this by splitting zeta 3 into sums over the even and odd integers. So you get 4 times 7 by 8 of Apery's constant. So the result is that the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x squared by sine x dx equals 2 pi times top g, Catalan's constant, minus 7 by 2 zeta 3, which is the which is Apery's constant. So yeah, a pretty nice result that I will prove later using a much more rigorous approach due to my friend Myers. And uh, till then, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.